Chapter 48 Nick I stared at the girl who had just left the bar. Briar Palvin. I could NT believe it. The guy who was hanging on her arm let her go and hurried over to her colleague. Already. He was too pissed off to fuck four guys at once if necessary, but seeing. Briar completely threw me off. Her face also showed surprise but I turned away from her. I looked at her and focused on her two buds. What did you say you were going to do with my nose, idiot? I clenched her fist, wanting to shut her fucking mouth up with one blow. It was believed that because there were now two of them I was going to be cut off and that they were wrong. Nicholas, please, I heard Noah insist, pulling my hand. The blonde took a step forward, invading my personal space. I recommend that you leave, I said, controlling my tone of voice. Or else what? The other asshole positioned himself next to his friend. It would be so easy to leave them. Bleeding on the floor, but it wasn't what he wanted, not at that time, not in that place, and less with those who were watching me. I looked over at Briar, and saw that just at that moment he was approaching with a thug. The one he had gone to look for at the door. The big guy looked at us with a bad face until stop next to us, right in the middle. Get out of here if you don't want me to call the police, he said, looking away. Me a second later all three. The cocoon seemed to shrink, and I took the opportunity to avoid a situation that only. I'd get some bruised fists and an even bigger fight with Noah. He had a bigger problem to deal with, especially seeing that Briar was. He pulled Noah closer and put his arm around his arm. When I was able to turn towards them, I tried with all my might to look for something that say to that girl with fiery red hair. His look was totally indifferent. Aren't you going to introduce us, Noah? He said with that angelic voice that he knew he always used. Convenience. Noah looked at me nervously, biting her lip. I would have liked to pull him towards. Down, so that he wouldn't get hurt, but the words that came out of his mouth managed to. That all the alarms in my body became tense. Nick, this is my new roommate, Briar, Briar this is my boyfriend, Nicholas. It took me a few seconds too long to raise her hand and shake the one she held out to me. I couldn't believe this was happening. Briar Palvin was the last girl. Would have chosen to live with Noah, not only because of who he was but rather because there was. She knew the worst about me, and when I say the worst, I mean the worst. Delighted, Nicholas. She said waiting for my response. I pursed my lips immediately. Least I almost barked. As if I didn't know. I didn't understand why he was acting. He didn't know me but it was too late to explain. Plus the last thing I wanted. It was having to give Noah another reason to want to doubt what we had. Briar Palvin. She belonged to my past and she was going to stay there. We have to go, I said, grabbing Noah and pulling her towards the car. Wait, Noah said, letting go of me. Can you drive? I heard him ask worriedly. I wanted to grab Noah and put her in the trunk, always worried about who she shouldn't be. That girl knew perfectly well whether she could drive or not and if she couldn't she would figure it out. Get home safe and sound. She already knew very well how she spent it. Yes, don't worry, go and fix things with your boy, she was speaking in a tone of. Her voice was low but I could hear her clearly. Noah smiled at her, as if they were lifelong friends, and I got in and started the car. With the intention of not continuing to listen. When I noticed how Noah turned his back to him and approached the passenger door. My gaze and briars met. Her cat-like green eyes showed more than that I could have expected and I knew, seeing the smile on her features that she had to get Noah away from her no matter what. Are you not going to say anything? Noah asked me five minutes after he put me in. On the freeway. I shifted from third to fourth and hit the accelerator. What do you want me to tell you? I answered reluctantly. Every time I come to see you there are some shit you're into, at this rate you're going to make the moments I spend. With you are reduced to fights and bloody fists. He knew he shouldn't have said that, especially after seeing Noah. 
She remained silent in the next seat. When I couldn't take it anymore, I turned her face to look at her and saw that she had her gaze fixed on him. Road. What was she thinking? I turned onto a secondary road, I had thought about going to my apartment but I didn't know if it was. Good idea. With the way things were, it was better to stay on no man's land. I continued. Driving up a hill that overlooked the lit lights of the city. Normally this was a place where couples came to fuck but it wasn't my. I intend to do that tonight. I parked far away, where I knew there would be no one, and turned off the. Her car and then turned towards her. I'm sorry for what I said, I said, trying to calm down. I knew that no matter how angry. If she was upset about everything, or overwhelmed by her and her mother's attitude, I didn't want to do anything to her. Hurt and seeing her silent was worse than seeing her go hoarse yelling at me. You're sorry you said it but it's what you think. Finally her eyes sought mine. The silence interrupted by the distant noise of the highway and the knocking of the wind against the trees in the forest behind us. Of. Had it been another time or another situation it would have even been romantic to have brought her here. But not today. You have a gift for getting on my nerves, but it's also my fault that I take the piss. Things like I do. You will never be guilty of the wounds on my fists, freckles, and you know it. Her gaze shifted from my eyes to my wrist, which was resting on the steering wheel. You're not guilty of that either, Noah, I got the tattoo because I wanted to, I like them. Those words and more coming from you and if we add that it was you who drew them on me. Fur. Can I see it? She asked me a second later. I stretched out her arm until she carefully took my wrist and turned my palm away from her. Leaving her up and with his eyes fixed on her tattoo, he began to trace with the tip of his. From her finger what she had written there. I felt a chill. I like her, she finally said, her eyes returning to mine. I let out the air I had in my lungs slowly as I lost myself in her gaze. Why was it so difficult to love her? If she let herself we would be perfect for him. Another, if Noah didn't have all those fears, he would love her without doubts or clauses. I reached out and placed my hand on the back of her neck, pulling her towards me, but her hand on my chest held me back. Her eyes looking down and my heart stopping for a few moments. We always do the same thing, Nicholas, she said, now looking me in the eyes. We do what? I answered, aware of the tone in which my words came out of me. Mouth. Noah shifted restlessly in his seat until he looked away from her and into the lights. That we had in front of us. You can't tell me what you tell me on the phone and then come here, as if nothing had happened. Give me four kisses and pretend I forget it. What the hell was she talking about now? Seeing that he remained silent, she turned to me again. I'm going to the psychologist for you, I'm doing therapy, telling a person my life. Unknown to you, and what worries you? That he is a guy and according to you he jerks off. Thinking about me. Do you see that normal? Do you see that normal jealousy? It's not jealousy, damn it, I want you to improve, I want the best psychologist for you, Noah, no. Anyone. You want to control everything Nicholas, and there are things that are beyond your power, it's my. Decision to whom I tell my things, who I decide to trust, and instead of understanding. That's it, you worry because the psychologist is a man. There are men everywhere, not. You can isolate me in a bubble. I want the best for you. I want them to cure you once and for all. Her eyes widened in surprise and disbelief to look at me in pain for a second. After. Shit. Can they cure me? He said in a low voice but his voice breaking on the last syllable. Without. Barely giving me time to hold her back, he got out of the car and slammed the door. I got off as quickly as I could and when I caught up with her she was already dialing a number on. Her phone. Who are you calling? I said, approaching her. Her eyes glistening with tears stopped me where she was. Noah. I didn't mean that. I tried to speak in a conciliatory tone. Get away from me, she said, taking a step back, with the phone to her ear and her hand. Extended, I'm not sick, 
Nicholas, I can't believe you said that. Fuck, shit. I took another step forward. I said stay away. I cursed under my breath, as she put my hands on the back of her neck and watched her tell him. The address to someone. Noah, listen to me, I said when she put the phone in her bag. She turned towards me throwing flames at me. I'm trying to change for you. I do everything I can for you, and you just throw things at me. Damn, you only know how to boss me around, Nicholas, and I'm fed up. His words hurt me, like stakes driven into my heart, one by one. I don't want you to change, Noah, I said, trying to make him calm down. You're not sick. I have never thought about it, I just want you to improve, to not be afraid, to stop running away from. Me, that's all I want. You want me to always improve under your conditions, Nicholas, he answered. Hugging his bare arms because of the cold, this is crazy. You're the one who needs. Aid. You see threats where there are none. I approached her not giving a shit if her feet were moving away from me and her eyes were moving away from me. They warned me to stay where she was. My hands held her arms and I. I crouched down to be level with her. You're doing it again, looking for any excuse to get away from me. Because. You do. Noah shook his head and closed his eyes. I think we need some time, he said, looking at the ground. I grabbed her chin with two fingers and forced her to look at me. You're not serious. The tears that he had not yet shed shone in his eyes. I think we both need to see things in perspective, we need to find each other. Less so, Nick, because right now I don't recognize you, I don't recognize us. I only see jealousy. Everywhere, and that is wrong. Don't do this, don't leave me. I raised my hands to his cheeks, cradled his face with them and lowered my lips to touch theirs. Just a few days, Nicholas, he said then. Give me time to assimilate everything that has happened. Past, having left home, your apartment, my room in the residence, having. I started to talk about my past, to stir up painful memories, to feel that I am not. Enough for you. His voice broke on the last word and I took her into my arms, hugged her tightly. Force. You are all I need, love, please don't deprive me of having you with me, don't. Deprive me of this, I said, throwing her head back and kissing her truly, with infinite affection, but also with infinite passion. Her body shuddered and I moved away from her. I think we both have to solve our problems, Nicholas, and yelling at each other. In the face we will not solve anything. You have to learn to trust me and I have to stop running away from what you do to me. Feel, because I love you too much, Nick, I love you so much that it hurts. I felt like I was out of breath, I couldn't let her go like that, I couldn't leave there without her, watching as she swallowed her tears. That is why being separated is not going to be of any use, you and I are not made to. That, remember? I said wiping away a tear that had escaped, without permission, from her eyes. Beautiful eyes of hers. I need to think. I need to know what I want, what I'm missing. Because right now all I do is think about you, and although a part of me knows that. Needs you, there is another one that is disappearing, Nicholas, there is no Noah without you and that cannot. Be like this, I can't depend on you like this, because I will end up losing myself. Yourself, don't you see it? What I saw was a beautiful and destroyed girl. Destroyed because of me, for not knowing how to make her happy. Why wasn't she capable? What is it? What was I doing wrong? What had happened to that time when Noah gave me a hundred smiles at? Day. Where was that special glow that you got as soon as you met your gaze? Was she right? Was she changing it? At that moment some lights illuminated us from behind us. Noah looked at that. Address, and I knew he was about to cry, really cry. I took a deep breath trying to put my feelings aside. I'll give you a week, Noah, I said, forcing her eyes to understand the seriousness. What my words gave off, I'll give you a week to miss me with everyone. The pores of your skin, seven days for you to realize that your place is with me and will be. Always. 
She stayed still and I leaned in to kiss those sensual lips, that beautiful mouth, that mouth that belonged to me. I put my tongue in her and looked for hers, twisting it with mine, my arm squeezed her tightly. Force of her against my body, transmitting my heat, my desire for her, my pain for leaving her. To march. When I pulled away we were both panting. Dash seven days, Noah. I watched as she left and got into the car. It wasn't until I saw the red flash. I realized that it was Briar who was driving the car. The fear of her speaking made me instantly regret leaving her. To march. Chapter 49. Noah. I stared at the cup between my fingers. The smoke came out in swirls. Up and warming my face slightly. It was getting colder and colder in the city. Summer was already behind us and as I watched the clouds melt in my hot chocolate I had to make an effort to understand what Michael was insisting on. Make me see. Many times, people like you, who suffered abuse as children, when they are older people need their partners to control them. You have told me many times that. You hate it when Nicholas tells you what you can or can't do, but even though you know that. It's wrong, you keep coming back to him, you keep crying because he's not the one by your side, I. You say you're in love, that you feel like you can't breathe, and that's not healthy, Noah. I want you to understand it, I want you to stop and look at it with perspective, everything that. You have lived has brought you to this point. My eyes lifted and locked on him. He had been coming to see him every single time. One of the days that had passed since Nick and I had taken a break. Sometimes he even came twice a day. Talking to Michael was helping me, or so I thought. Although with each word that came out of his mouth, the more confused I became about. Nicholas and I. I have always been afraid of the dark, I have always felt that it found me. Under a glass of water, sinking deeper every day, not being able to stay afloat. Only when I met Nick could I breathe again, could I come to the surface. As. Can that be bad? How can that be something harmful to me? Michael got up from his chair and walked over to the couch where I was sitting. He watched me. Carefully. You have to swim alone, Noah, Nicholas won't always be your lifeguard, or you learn. To swim or the slightest thing that he has distracted you will sink again. Seven days had passed, seven long days in which we had not addressed each other. Word. Nick had initially tried to contact me, and I almost. To forget all this nonsense about the distance and beg him to come see me at the apartment, that. I hugged myself in his arms. You're doing great, Noah, you're listening to me, you're learning to survive. Without him, and only then, when you learn to walk alone you will be able to do it with someone. What are they? Seven days for someone who can barely understand that being locked up in. A room out of jealousy is not okay? I frowned, wondering if he had been right to tell her so much about. Nick. When I had mentioned that time, that time Nick locked me in his. Room by the painters, I had forgotten that that was not well regarded outside of my. Bubble with Nick. Yes, he had been bad, but Michael made it worse than he was. When. When I told him, he was so shocked that for the first time I thought I saw anger in his eyes. Brown, his calm disappeared to make way for disbelief and bewilderment. Were those things that Nick did to me that serious? I already told you that he was not as you imagine, you don't know him, you don't understand what he has done. Past. Noah, no one, no one, should decide for you. Neither lock you up, nor force you to go away. Live with him, or change your apartment, much less tell you how many days you can. Stay away from him. Don't you see it? You must be the owner of your mind if you want to consider. Have a relationship. I took a deep breath, I didn't like where the conversation was going. To the. In the end we always ended up talking about Nick, and I wanted him to help me with my. Fears, with my nightmares. I stood up leaving the cup on the table and walked over to the window. Out now. It was almost night, and I saw some students passing by who were probably leaving the afternoon shift. 
I just want to be normal, I said without wanting to turn around or see the reaction to my words. Then I felt him put his hand around my arm, he forced me to turn around, and his eyes. They looked for mine. Noah, you are normal, you have just experienced situations that are not normal at all. You understand? You are extrapolating your fears and insecurities to your romantic relationship with Nicholas and that is why I'm trying to make you see that the relationship you have with him is not what you should. I let go of his grip and went to sit on the couch. I don't want to talk about Nick anymore. Michael sighed and sat back down across from me. I noticed that he stopped for a while. More observing his notes. Let's talk about how you've spent the last few nights, have you been doing what you want? Said. I nodded even though it had done me little good, the nightmares kept coming to me and. I was still unable to turn off the light so I could sleep in the dark. The fear you have is directly linked to what happened to you with your father, you. You yourself told me that before he attacked you, you locked yourself in your dark room and. You felt protected. Your father sort of turned that around and made it everything. On the contrary, that is why it affects you so much, something that for you was a conciliatory environment and. Protected became your biggest nightmare. I hated remembering that night, I hated feeling his hands on my skin again, his fingers. Pulling on my ankle, and pinning me tightly against the mattress. I closed my eyes with. Strength and clenched my fists against my legs. The person who should have protected you betrayed you, he was an adult, someone who knew what. I did, on the other hand, you were a girl, defenseless, you were alone, no one helped you, Noah, and you did. You did everything you could to escape, you were brave and you didn't hesitate, you fought for yourself when no one else. I can do it. I opened my eyes thinking about my mother. In how she faced the blows of her always without. Positive results, she only managed to make it worse, I learned by watching her that sometimes she was. It was better to stay silent, accept what they had to shout at us, my father always told me. That he did it for her, he always told me that I was not a bad girl, that's why I never. She played. He loved me, he should never have hurt me. He loved me. On the morning of the seventh day I woke up with a strange sensation in the mouth of her. Stomach. I needed to see him. She needed him like air to breathe, I didn't care that Michael said that my relationship was toxic and dependent, I didn't care if I hid behind him, if I used to overcome my fears. I loved him, I needed him, he was the only one who wouldn't leave me. He wasn't going to leave, he had told me, he loved me and he would always be there for me. So why was I wasting time with separations that didn't do us any good? I nervously dressed in the first thing I saw and got into the car. It took me a while. More than necessary to get to his office. My beetle was on its last legs and there was nothing that bothered me more than going to. 90 on the highway. My mother had contacted me, she had told me. That she would pick up the car, that she wanted to see me and that if she didn't answer the calls. She would be the one who would show up on campus, but the truth is that my mother was the last one of my problems right now. He was afraid he had pushed Nick too far. I just wanted to see him and notice in his look that had missed me as much as I missed him. Walking into Leicester Enterprises I got nervous. Most of the people were dressed of overwhelming elegance. The women had hairdressers hair and seeing me in the elevator mirror I felt a knot of discomfort in my stomach. I had made a braid. Quick and my jeans and converse were nothing special. I felt like an idiot for having introduced myself like that and more after so many days without Nick seeing me. As I got out of the elevator, a middle-aged woman showed me where the office was. Nick. He had never been here and I felt as small as an ant. Everything was shining and the walls were glass. In the center, past the reception, there was a huge hall with White sofas on a deep black rug. Grey, white and black. Why wasn't I surprised? And then I saw it. His office was made of glass and he was not alone. I felt a lump in my throat when I saw. Sophia sitting on her table. 
From where she was he could see how her cheeks. They were tense upwards, she was smiling and spoke gesturing with her hands. Nick. He seemed exasperated but he held back the urge to laugh at whatever she seemed to be. Insisting. I walked up to the door and then she saw me. I watched through the glass as she got up from the chair, as Sophia turned toward her. To me, how her smile disappeared from her face and how Nick came to greet me. Noah, she said simply after opening the door for me. I didn't know very well what to say, jealousy, that horrible jealousy took over again. From my. He couldn't help it, she was perfect, perfect for him. Hello Noah, I'm glad to see you again, Sophia told me with a smile from ear to ear. Ear. I returned it to him as best I could. Nick couldn't take his eyes off me. Do you mind leaving us alone for a moment, Sof? Sof. Stabbed in the stomach. She nodded and left the office, leaving us alone. I approached her table and saw how Nick did the same, he took a paper that had been on top of everything else and kept it in a drawer. Then he hit some kind of button and the walls began to darken. In less than 15 seconds I was no longer able to see nothing more than what was inside those four walls. Then her hands surrounded me, the heat that her body gave off surrounded me. Complete and he pulled my braid back so he could look me dead in the eyes. 4. For an instant he seemed to hesitate as to what to do next, but resolution crossed his face. Half a second later, half a second was the most that man could feel. Insecure. He gave me a half smile before taking hold of my mouth. I closed my eyes and let myself be carried away by the sweet sensation. My hands clung to her. Shirt from him, and I chased out of my head all those things that had made me stay away from him. His hands clung to my face, his fingers mixed in my hair, he held me. By the back of our heads, controlling at all times what we were doing. He forced me to move a few inches apart to let his eyes roam over my face. My body and my trembling fingers. Without saying a word, his mouth tenderly kissed me on the tip of my nose, then on the cheek of him, going down my chin until making me shudder with the touch of his tongue, wet. On the sensitive skin of my neck. I've missed you, freckles, he said with his eyes fixed on mine and filled with a strange feeling, difficult to define. Had he done it? Had he missed me? He didn't seem to be sad for a few seconds, he was laughing, he seemed relaxed, and what's worse, he was with her. What is that paper that you have kept in the drawer? I asked him more than anything to distract me I noticed that he suddenly became tense. Nothing, work stuff he said, dismissing it Noah. Tell me this rest shit is over, because I've been on the verge of turning back. Crazy, you stopped answering my calls, you stopped reading my messages. I needed time to think, I said and noticed how harsh and distant my voice had sounded. Voice. She had gone to that office because she needed to hug him, because he needed to hug her again. Breathe deeply and now that he was there, now that he had him in front of him, with his suit and tie, surrounded by all that luxury, working and laughing with his partner. I felt like I was drowning, and suddenly all I wanted to do was leave that place and to hear Michael say again that he was capable of dealing with anything, that I was the one. That he had to face my fears, that he was strong, that he was intelligent, that nothing and no one was going to be able to knock me down. I just needed to see him with her so that all my self-esteem was once again on the floor. Nick frowned at me. Noah. What's wrong with you? I shook my head, I looked into his pretty eyes worried about me and I knew he wasn't prepared. I need more time. His fingers stopped mid-caress. His skin stopped being in contact with the mine and suddenly I felt small next to him. She sat up and looked at me intently from her. Height of it. No. Two letters, one word. Nicholas, I. I haven't seen you for seven days, I've given you time to think, I don't even know what. Damn you have to be thinking, I'm not going to be away from you anymore, Noah, it's over. She walked away and went to the window behind her desk. Before. 
She couldn't say anything else, the door opened behind me and Sophia came back in. One look was enough for him to know that things were not going well. I... I'm sorry to interrupt you but, they need you in the meeting room Nick. Don't call him Nick, don't call him anything, I don't want you around him, I don't. I don't want in this office or in this company. I don't care that you seem to be a good person. I'm not interested, I just love you from miles away. Nicholas walked to the door, looked at Sophia and then at me. Wait for me here. When Nick left the office, Sophia and I were immersed in an awkward conversation. Silence. I watched as he walked up to his office and took a seat. You can sit if you want, can I make you a coffee or something? I shook my head and stood still where she was. Noah. I think I know why you are like this, but it is a unique opportunity, I would give what I. No matter why they gave me that position, and New York is not that far away, many people. They have a long distance relationship and it would only be. Wait to? My heart began to beat hard against my ribs, so much so that I thought it would give out. It was going to come out of the chest. What did you say? I repeated, taking a step forward. The words that had just come out of her mouth began to repeat in my brain. Like a macabre song. Opportunity, New York, relationship at a distance. Sophia looked at Nick's table, then at me, and then her eyes widened. Surprise. Her cheeks began to turn a deep scarlet color. I... I thought Nick. What opportunity are you talking about? Sophia shook her head. You should ask him, Noah, I shouldn't have said anything, just. I thought that I had told you, but considering how insistent they are being. Nicholas hasn't told me anything, but since you've started now it's over, what's the point? Hell are you talking? He knew that soon he would end up exploding and he preferred not to do it in front of her, he wanted. To leave but first I wanted to know what the hell was going on. Dash one of the best law firms in New York has offered you a two-year job. Years, that we won the Rogers case caught the attention of many people, people. Important, and even though I would love to take credit we wouldn't have done it. Achieved if it weren't for Nick. I didn't even know they had won the case, I didn't even know that Nicholas. Interested in a job in New York, much less a job in. Two years. I needed to get out of there, get out before Nicholas came. Tell Nicholas, tell him I had to leave, tell him I wasn't feeling very well. Before I could walk out the door, Sophia grabbed me by the arm and looked at me with her. Brown eyes full of huge eyelashes. Her heels made her stand above. Me and I didn't like that feeling, I didn't like it at all. I know you don't want him to leave, but you should support him in this, Noah. Anger took over my entire system and with a jerk I managed to get him to let go. Don't even think about telling me what I should or shouldn't do with my boyfriend. It didn't take me two minutes to get into the elevator and leave the building. Two years. Was he considering leaving for two years and leaving me here? And. Why was she the one who was aware and not me? You should support him on this, Noah. I stepped on the accelerator and blinked hard, trying not to let the tears stop me. See the road. I couldn't go two years without Nick. I would die.